like the sun from the sky. The history of my ancestors has been stolen. A mask that dropped in the museum made my heart broken. More than a hundred years never spoke a word, but the eyes were speaking, saying they took every precious thing from us, but our freedom can't be taken. It's not only about the space. I hate being in this cage. Tell my people that I don't want to be here. I'm dying in this place. Tell the world that they're missing the main point. Tell them my people are still suffering. And this is the case. Okay, my name is Natty Mark Samuels and I'm an educator. In 2009, I set up the African School because when we look at uh, Oxford, there's a real dearth of provision concerning African studies. So the university, Oxford University, only offers it at a master's level. Um, Brooks doesn't offer it. Uh, Abner and Whitney doesn't offer it. Uh, the City College doesn't uh, offer it. So it became my kind of self-imposed remit to make sure that there's African studies um, for the general community. My mission is just to share as much as African studies as possible. There's a real kind of, um, as far as Africa is concerned, um, I think many people are still very ignorant of the uh, continent. Um, and the press gives us this kind of constant onslaught of dictatorship and bloodshed and, and such forth. So kind of my teaching focuses on the pre-colonial times because then we get to celebrate all the great kings, queens, uh, philosophers, writers, teachers and such forth. So then I'll be able to kind of give more balanced accounting of the continent's history. <laughs> to gain a deeper understanding of um, the masking traditions, as well as uh, visiting museums, try and uh, access books that are going to give you a deeper meaning of the significance of these masks. I mean, we've got so much access now. Um, theses have been written, essays, books, um, magazine articles. There, there is enough out there if people wanted to dig in. Yeah, they just have to have that desire. Well, I mean, a lot of these traditions were kind of trampled on by the coming of Christianity and the West. Um, and the only way they're going to be revitalised, really, if they went back to the source, I think, you know, this kind of um, ancestral um, veneration um, where there was respect for the, the elders, um, I think they need to go back to that kind of basic kind of structure for them to be able to kind of appreciate what these masks were and 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 are you know there's there's still places where they still these these masks are still being used um still being uh, worshipped uh utilized in, in sacred um ceremonies so but i think for the youth in in general to to have a greater uh, appreciation of this i think it'd have to be um a reintroduction of what was there before. A lot of the mm -hmm. things that were dismantled and trampled on by the West, a lot of that would have to be kind of resurrected. These Europeans seem to have progressed a lot, don't you think? Aywa, the Mali Empire was the richest in Africa. I am sure my region is doing great right now. But my spirit yearns to be with my people. Yes, our people. One day we will truly be free. They were there as items of a uh, utility. So whether they were there to um, appease the ancestors, as a homage to womanhood, um, pathways to a uh, initiation from a youth uh, to a man, um, Thanksgiving. Um, so they were the main mm -hmm. uh, reasons that these masks were made and danced.
it's good for me, someone who was born here of African descent, to go back and be able to reclaim something that was lost to me because of the um, the, 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 the Atlantic uh, journey. So for me, it's, yeah, the first thing is joy. And then second, just this kind of, yeah, this is mine and I can claim it. Um, when I go to um, Africa, for me, it's like an injection. Um, I come back um, just buoyed up and, and, and revitalised because I've touched the place of my uh, ancestry. Um, and when I'm there, I don't sleep much. Um, I just, I'm out and about talking to people, observing. Um, so as I say, when I come back, I'm just rejuvenated and I'm just ready to share everything that I've learned. She a tree, I beg you come shower me with the blessings that you give. Presentations of butter and all. Yeah, artifact, um, ethnographic uh, items. Um, yeah, I think they would probably, that is probably a just explanation for what they were made for originally. When they came to Europe, um, obviously they, uh, they took on um, another significance, but originally they were there, yeah, as, a, as a, um, uh, artifacts there to um, perform a certain function. I think um, the experimentation and the sense of adventure that people like um, Picasso, Modigliani, Brancusi, these kind of people, their viewing of African art um, inspired them 100%. You know, Picasso even went through this period because we know about his blue period and his rosé period. Mm -hmm. What we don't know about is his African period. And over that two uh, two year period, he produced, um, I think, some some uh, great art. One of them is uh, the head of a sleeping woman. As someone of African descent, I'm so happy that they were so inspired by that. And from that, we came, you know, came things like uh, cubism and such forth. You know, when, when Attenborough looked at the uh, Ife heads, when he first saw them, he said that they could compare to anything that ancient Greece or Rome had produced. So would you classify those um, objects as art? Um, I would, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you can just look at them and see that they're, you know, great, great pieces of uh, sculpture, you know, uh, without a doubt. I place my creative writing um, as paramount in my teaching. Um, because I'm trying to reach a wider range as possible, sometimes I find that people will gain more from a poem or a chant than, would, than they would from an article or even an excerpt from an, um, an uh, essay. I just want to make African studies as accessible as possible, make sure that as wide a range of people can engage and go away after being at one of my workshops to say, yeah, I learned something, but I also enjoyed it. Um, and then um, as far as Africa and the Caribbean is concerned, if you look at the evening, so before Western education came in, the evening classroom, well, I call it a classroom, but the evening storytelling was where the first kind of education was passed on whether it's via the uh, grandmother or one of the elders or from a, uh, a visiting guru. So the, the evening storytelling was paramount, but the main aspect of um, audience participation was through songs. So I'm always using songs and chant and poetry in my uh, delivery. She a tree, I beg you come shower me with the blessings that you give. Presentations of butter and oars. There. Tap. Tap. Tap, tap. Woken up by a summer storm, extinguishing the burning city's heat. I know tomorrow will bring respite and peace, but tonight it is loud. Won't let me sleep.